The following is a email exchange between a random laywoman who seems to be vaguely aware of the ban of keeping or reading forbidden books and Robert Diamond. The email exchange gets titled by Robert Diamond in capital letters The King James Bible. Dear brothers, I am a recent convert to the true Catholic faith from Protestantism. I have grown up using the King James Bible, which you quote often to Protestants because even with some errors, it still proves Catholic doctrine. One of the facts which helped me see the light, by the way, smiley face. Because there are apparently errors in the King James Bible, I think it might be due more to misinterpretation rather than the errors themselves, which I've heard are more grammatical than anything else. Should I burn these Bibles in my possession? or dispose of them along with Protestant books or videos I've had over the years, I think that might be dangerous, even though it, it was suggested to me to burn the Bibles, as they still contain mostly correct holy scriptures. Please tell me what you think. I would like to maybe hang on to a copy to prove points with Protestants as you do. Also, my children have Bibles in my home, which are KJV. I want to see them converted. Not sure if doing away with their Bibles will help or hinder this cause. I can understand about Protestant books or videos because those are even more based on interpretations that are twisted and man-made. But the KJV still contains God's holy words. Am I way off base? I respect your opinions immensely, and my friend has used your materials to majorly influence me in converting to the Catholic faith. God bless you both and your ministry. I look forward to hearing from you. Sincerely, Yvonne Mac MacIsaac. This is the answer by the Diamond Brothers. It's great to hear about your conversion. No, we don't believe you should burn the King James Bible. The translation is actually not as bad as many of those who profess to be Catholics think. It can be retained for purposes of comparison, study, etc. Also, many of the differences in various English translations of the Bible are not simply a result of translational choices, but manuscript choices. That is, the underlying Greek manuscript readings from which they were translating were slightly different in some cases, that is, manuscript variants. The issue of manuscript variants with regard to the King James Bible, etc., is covered in this video and article. Is the King James Bible infallible? King James Onlyism exposed video and article. With regard to whether one should get rid of Protestant books and videos, it would depend on what the videos are about and what they contain. Of course, people who might fall prey to Protestant lies should not be reading or watching their heretical perversions of the Bible. But if a person of strong faith retains such materials for a specific purpose, that is, research and refutation, that would be acceptable. It really depends on the video or book and what it would be kept for. Here we have another example of how the dishonest, lying and anti-Catholic Diamond Brothers first recommend to a random laywoman to keep a Protestant book. Second, moreover their answer reads the translation is actually not as bad as many of those who profess to be Catholics think. Third, notice how they speak disdainfully of the faithful who reject the King James, quote, Bible, 
stating that those are not truly Catholic, quote, who profess to be Catholics, saying that the King James book is, quote, not bad, by which they mean good. Fourth, they go on to say, quote, it can be retained for purposes of comparison, study, etc. What does this mean other than that Mr. Diamond recommends this book to the laywoman as worthy for, quote, Bible study? And what is comparison other than to bring a thing into comparison with another? So Mr. Diamond recommends to bring the Catholic Bible into comparison with the KJV, implying that there is something in the KJV that would be superior than what can only be found in the Catholic Bible. For what good is the comparison if you already had a perfect translation, the Catholic Bible? But it is not good enough for Mr. Diamond. So he recommends the heretical KJV for comparison to see if there is some better translation in it. Fifth, Robert Diamond's answer goes on talking about vernacular translations, as if lay people were entitled to dabble in translations privately. Quote, also many of the differences in various menus in Various English translations of the Bible are not simply a result of translational choices, but manuscript choices, that is, the underlying Greek manuscript readings from which they were translating were slightly different in some cases, that is, manuscript variants. Sixth, further notice how the woman asking the diamonds admits that her children get to read the pestilential KJV. And the diamonds don't even reprehend her for this. For giving them this forbidden pestilential books. They do not care. It's a good, quote, Bible for the Diamond Brother family. Seventh, the woman asking is aware that there are errors in the KJV, but she falsely claims they are only grammatical or of little weight, she is horribly wrong, and in fact, quote, way off, as she seemed to be semi-aware of, with the knowledge the Diamond Brothers possess of the Catholic religion, it would have been their duty to warn her and encourage her to burn that book, but the Diamond Brothers are people who externally seem pious but on closer examination proved to be obstinate heretics. So I ask the following questions. Was the King James, quote, Bible, not written as a Protestant counter-Bible, to challenge the biblical authority of the Catholic Church? Is not the very purpose, then, of that Protestant book to conceal heresies, such as the craftily inserted heresy of, quote, sola scriptura and other heretical mistranslations, editions, etc. Does this, quote, Bible even contain the whole canon of biblical books contained in the Catholic Bible? Opposed to the diamond's wicked answer, we have Catholic authoritative teaching. And I would like to quote a few quotes, and you can judge for yourself if Mr. Diamond deviates from dogma and is a schismatic or not, and God knows best if you are honest or not. Early regional councils that prohibited vernacular translations were Toulouse in 1229, Tria in 1231, Tarragona in 1233, and Beziers in 1246. Rhymes in 1230 also banned translation into Gaelic, that is French. Pope Innocent III stated in 1199 
To be reproved are those who translate into French the Gospels, the letters of Paul, the Psalter, etc. They are moved by a certain love of Scripture in order to explain them clandestinely and to preach them to one another. The mysteries of the faith are not to be explained rashly to anyone. Usually, in fact, they cannot be understood by everyone, but only by those who are qualified to understand them with informed intelligence. The depth of the divine scriptures is such that not only the illiterate and uninitiated have difficulty understanding them, but also the educated and the gifted. From Unigenitus, the dogmatic constitution issued by Pope Clement XI on September 8, 1730, the following statements are condemned as being erroneous. 79. It is useful and necessary at all times, in all places, and for every kind of person to study and to know the spirit, the piety, and the mysteries of the sacred scripture. 80. The reading of sacred scripture is for all. 81. The sacred obscurity of the word of God is no reason for the laity to dispense themselves from reading it. 82. The Lord's Day ought to be sanctified by Christians with readings of pious works and, above all, of the holy scriptures. It is harmful for a Christian to wish to withdraw from this reading. 83. It is an illusion to persuade oneself that knowledge of the mysteries of religion should not be communicated to women by the reading of sacred scriptures, not from simplicity of women, but from the proud knowledge of men has arisen the abuse of the scriptures and have heresies been born. 84. To snatch away from the hands of Christians the New Testament, or to hold it closed against them by taking away from them the means of understanding it, is to close for them the mouth of Christ. 85. To forbid Christians to read the sacred scripture, especially the Gospels, is to forbid the use of light to the sons of light and to cause them to suffer a kind of excommunication. Declared and condemned as false, captious, evil-sounding, offensive to pious ears, scandalous, pernicious, rash, injurious to the Church and her practice, insulting not only to the Church but also the secular powers, seditious, impious, blasphemous, suspected of heresy and smacking of heresy itself, and, besides, favoring heretics and heresies, and also schisms, erroneous, close to heresy, many times condemned, and finally, heretical, clearly renewing many heresies respectively, and most especially those which are contained in the infamous propositions of Janssen, and, indeed, accepted in that sense in which these have been condemned. This was confirmed by Popes Innocent the Thirteenth, Benedict the Thirteenth, and Clement the Twelfth. From the Constitution, Auctorem Finei, August 28, 1794, by Pope Pius VI, the doctrine asserting that, quote, only a true impotence excuses, unquote, from the reading of the sacred scriptures, adding, moreover, that there is produced the obscurity which arises from a neglect of this precept in regard to the primary truths of religion, false, rash, disturbing to the peace of souls, condemned elsewhere in Casnel, also in Unigenitus by Pope Clement XI on September 8, 1713. The Council of Tarragona of 1234, in its second canon, ruled that 
No one may possess the books of the Old and New Testaments in the Romans' language, and if anyone possesses them, he must turn them over to the local bishop within eight days after promulgation of this decree, so that they may be burnt, lest, be he a cleric or a layman, he be suspected until he is cleared of all suspicion. From the encyclical Traditi Humilitati of Pope Pius VIII, May 24, 1829, Fifth, we must also be wary of those who publish the Bible with new interpretations contrary to the Church's laws. They skillfully distort the meaning by their own interpretation. They print the Bibles in the vernacular and, absorbing an incredible expense, offer them free, even to the uneducated. Furthermore, the Bibles are rarely without perverse little inserts to ensure that the reader imbibes their lethal poison, instead of the saving water of salvation. Long ago the Apostolic See warned about this serious hazard to the faith, and drew up a list of the authors of these pernicious notions. The rules of this index were published by the Council of Trent. The ordinance required that translations of the Bible into the vernacular not be permitted without the approval of the Apostolic See, and further required that they be published with commentaries from the Fathers. The sacred synod of Trent had decreed, in order to restrain impudent characters, that no one, relying on his own prudence in matters of faith and of conduct, which concerns Christian doctrine, might twist the sacred scriptures to his own opinion, or to an opinion contrary to that of the Church or the Pope's though such machinations against the Catholic faith had been assailed long ago by these canonical proscriptions. Our recent predecessors made a special effort to check these spreading evils. With these arms may you too strive to fight the battles of the Lord, which endanger the sacred teachings, lest this deadly virus spread in your flock. Pope Pius IX, Encyclical Qui Pluribus, November 9, 1846, 14. This is the goal, too, of the crafty Bible societies, which renew the old skill of their heretics, and ceaselessly force on people of all kinds, even the uneducated gifts of the Bible. They issue these in large numbers and at great cost, in vernacular translations which infringe the holy rules of the Church. The commentaries, which are included, often contain perverse explanations. So, having rejected divine tradition, the doctrine of the Fathers and the authority of the Catholic Church, they all interpret the words of the Lord by their own private judgment, thereby perverting their meaning. As a result, they fall into the greatest errors. Gregory the Sixteenth of happy memory, our superior predecessor, followed the lead of his own predecessors in rejecting these societies in his apostolic letters. It is our will to condemn them likewise. Pope Pius IX, Encyclical Nostitis et Nobiscum, December 8, 1849, number 14. The crafty enemies of the Church and human society attempt to seduce the people in many ways. One of their chief methods is the misuse of the new technique of book production. They are wholly absorbed in the ceaseless daily publication and proliferation of impious pamphlets, 
newspapers and leaflets which are full of lies, calumnies and seduction. Furthermore, under the protection of the Bible societies, which have long since been condemned by this holy see, they distribute to the faithful under the pretext of religion the Holy Bible in vernacular translations. Since these infringe the Church's rules, they are consequently subverted and most daringly twisted to yield a vile meaning. So you realize very well what vigilant and careful efforts you must make to inspire in your faithful people an utter horror of reading these pestilential books. Remind them explicitly with regard to divine scripture that no man, relying on his own wisdom, is able to claim the privilege of rashly twisting the scriptures to his own meaning in opposition to the meaning which Holy Mother Church holds and has held. It was the Church alone that Christ commissioned to guard the deposit of the faith and to decide the true meaning and interpretation of the divine pronouncements. Notice how, while Robert Diamond differentially refers to the Protestant KJV as Bible and condemns those who reject the KJV as non-Catholics, Pope Pius IX on the other hand, only refers to it as a pestilential book, something that is utterly abominable, infectious and fitted to spread a deadly spiritual disease. If the use of quotation marks in order to make understand that one wishes to distance oneself from the word put in quotation marks had been known back then, Pope Pius IX and other popes would have put the word Holy Bible with reference to illegitimate vernacular translations in quotation marks. Of this you can be sure. In this example, quote, Holy Bible, put in quotation marks, would be meant to imply skepticism or disagreement, or that the writer intends an opposite sense of the words enclosed in quotes. This is also called scare quotes. The term scare quotes as it refers specifically to the punctuation marks dates back to 1956. So it is rather a recent phenomenon. Providentissimus Deus, on the study of Holy Scripture, an encyclical of Pope Leo XIII, promulgated on November 18, 1893. Wherefore, it must be recognized that the sacred writings are wrapped in a certain religious obscurity and that no one can enter into their interior without a guide. God, so disposing as the Holy Fathers commonly teach, in order that man may investigate them with greater ardor and earnestness and that what is attained with difficulty may sink more deeply into the mind and heart, and most of all, that they may understand that God has delivered the Holy Scriptures to the Church, and that in reading and making use of His Word, they must follow the Church as their guide and their teacher. Saint Arrhenius long since laid down that where the charismata of God were, there the truth was to be learned, and that Holy Scripture was safely interpreted by those who had the apostolic succession. His teaching, and that of other Holy Fathers, is taken up by the Council of the Vatican, which, in renewing the decree of Trent, declares its mind to be this, that, in things of faith and morals, belonging to the building up of Christian doctrine, that is to be considered the true sense of Holy Scriptures, which has been held and is held by our Holy Mother, the Church, whose place it is to judge 
of the true sense and interpretation of the scriptures, and therefore that it is permitted to no one to interpret holy scriptures against such sense or also against the unanimous agreement of the fathers. Hence it follows that all interpretation is foolish and false, which either makes the sacred writers disagree one with another, or is opposed to the doctrine of the Church. The professor of Holy Scripture, therefore, amongst other recommendations, must be well acquainted with the whole circle of theology and deeply read in the commentaries of the Holy Fathers and doctors, and others and other interpreters of Mark. This is inculcated by St. Jerome and still more frequently by St. Augustine, who thus justly complains, If there is no branch of teaching, however humble and easy to learn, which does not require a master, what can be a greater sign of rashness and pride than to refuse to study the books of the divine mysteries by the help of those who have interpreted them. The, the other fathers have said the same and have confirmed it by their example, for they endeavored to acquire the understanding of the holy scriptures not by their own lights and ideas, but from the writings and authority of the ancients, who in turn, as we know, received the rule of interpretation in direct line from the apostles. But it is most unbecoming to pass by in ignorance or contempt the excellent work which Catholics have left in abundance and to have recourse to the works of non-Catholics and to seek in them to the detriment of sound doctrine and often to the peril of faith, the explanation of passages on which Catholics long ago have successfully employed their talent and their labor. For although these studies of non-Catholics used with prudence may sometimes be of use to the Catholic student, he should, nevertheless, Bear well in mind, as the fathers also teach in numerous passages, that the sense of Holy Scripture can nowhere be found incorrupt outside of the Church, and cannot be expected to be found in writers who, being without the true faith, only gnaw the bark of the sacred Scripture and never attain its pith. The apparent 1918 Code of Canon Law, Title 23, Censorship and Prohibition of Books, the Church has the right to rule that Catholics shall not publish any books unless they have been subjected to the approval of the Church and to forbid for a good reason the faithful to read certain books, no matter by whom they are published. The rules of this title concerning books are to be applied also to daily papers, periodicals and any other publication unless the contrary is clear from the canons. Chapter 1. Censorship of Books Without previous ecclesiastical approval, even laymen are not allowed to publish first, the books of Holy Scripture or annotations and commentaries of the same. Second, books treating of sacred scripture, theology, church history, canon law, natural theology, ethics and other sciences concerning religion and morals. Furthermore, prayer books, pamphlets and books of devotion of religious teaching, either moral, aesthetic or mystic, and any writing in general in which there is anything that has a special bearing on religion or morality. Third, sacred images reproduced in any manner, 
either with or without prayers, the permission not to publish books and images spoken of in this canon may be given either by the proper ordinary of the author or by the ordinary of the place where they are published or by the ordinary of the place where they are printed. If, however, any of the ordinaries who has a right to give approval refuses it, the author cannot ask of another unless he informs him of the refusal of the ordinary first requested. The religious must, moreover, first obtain permission from their major superior. Translations of the Holy Scriptures in the vernacular languages may not be published unless they are either approved by the Holy See or they are published under the supervision of the bishop with annotations chiefly taken from the Holy Fathers of the Church and learned Catholic writers. The prohibition of books has this effect that the forbidden books may not without permission be published, read, retained, sold, nor translated into another language, nor made known to others in any way. The book, which has in any way been forbidden, may not again be published, except after the demanded corrections have been made, and the authority which forbade the book or his superior or successor has given permission. Canon 1242, by the very law, are forbidden, first, editions of the original text, or of ancient Catholic versions of the sacred scriptures, also of the Oriental Church, published by non-Catholics. Likewise, any translation in any language made or published by them. Second, Books of any writers defending heresy or schism, or tending in any way to undermine the foundations of religion. Third, books which purposely fight against religion and good morals. Fourth, books of any non-Catholic treating professedly of religion unless it is certain that nothing is contained therein against the Catholic faith. Fifth, books on the Holy Scriptures or on religious subjects which have been published without the permission required by Canons 1385, paragraph 1, number 1 and 1391, books and leaflets which bring an account of new apparitions, revelations, visions, prophecies, miracles, or introduce new devotions, even though under the pretext that they are private, if these books, etc., are published against the rules of the canons. Sixth, books which attack or ridicule any of the Catholic dog dogmas, books which defend errors condemned by the Holy See, or which disparage divine worship, or tend to undermine ecclesiastical discipline, or which purposely insult the ecclesiastical hierarchy or the clerical and religious states. Pope Pius IV had a list of the forbidden books compiled and officially prohibited them in the Index of Trent, Index Librorum Prohibitorum, of 1559. This is an excerpt. Rule 1. All books which were condemned prior to 1515 by popes or ecumenical councils and are not listed in this index are to stand condemned in the original fashion. Rule 3. Translations of older works, including the Church Fathers, made by condemned authors, are permitted if they contain nothing against sound doctrine. However, translations of books of the Old Testament may be allowed by the judgment of bishops for the use of learned and pious men only. These translations are to elucidate the Vulgate, 
so that sacred scripture can be understood, but they are not to be considered as a sacred text. Translations of the New Testament made by authors of the first sections in this index are not to be used at all, since too little usefulness and too much danger attends such reading. Commentary Notice how this index expressly forbids to call these texts quote, Bibles, as Robert Diamond does call them. Vernacular Protestant translations are completely forbidden because of the danger inherent in them. Rule 4. Since experience teaches that if the reading of the Holy Bible in the vernacular is permitted generally without discrimination, more damage than advantage will result because of the boldness of man, the judgment of bishop and inquisitors is to serve as guide in this regard. Bishops and inquisitors may, in accord with the counsel of the local priest and confessor, allow Catholic translations of the Bible to be read by those of whom they realize that such reading will not lead to the detriment but to the increase of faith and piety. The permission is to be given in writing. Whoever reads or has such a translation in his possession without this permission cannot be absolved from his sins until he has turned in these Bibles. Commentary. This rule applies to Catholic translations. And notice how careful the Church is, even with regards to Catholics' Bibles in the vernacular. The King James Book is the most popular Protestant, quote, Bible. And still, self-proclaimed monk Robert Diamond recommends this vile book. Leo XIII, Apostolic Constitution Officiorum Ac Munerum, January 25, 1897, Article 1 of the Prohibition of Books, Chapters 2-3. Chapter 3 of Vernacular Versions of Holy Scripture. As it has been clearly shown by experience that if the Holy Bible in the vernacular is generally permitted without any distinction, more harm than utility is thereby caused, owing to human temerity. All versions in the vernacular, even by Catholics, are altogether prohibited, unless approved by the Holy See or published under the vigilant care of the bishops with annotations taken from the fathers of the Church and learned Catholic writers. Eighth, all versions of the Holy Bible in any vernacular language made by non-Catholics are prohibited, and especially those published by the Bible societies, which have been more than once condemned by the Roman pontiffs because in them the wise laws of the Church concerning the publication of the sacred books are entirely disregarded. Bishops and other prelates with quasi-ecclesiastical jurisdiction may grant such license for individual books and in urgent cases only, but if they have obtained from the apostolic seer general faculty to grant permission to the faithful to read and keep prohibited books, they must grant this only with discretion and for a just and reasonable cause. Article 2, Chapter 1, Thirtieth. From what has been laid down above, it is sufficiently clear what persons have authority to approve or permit editions and translations of the Holy Bible. Article 2, Chapter 4, Number 45 Books condemned by the Apostolic See 
are to be considered as prohibited all over the world and into whatever language they may be translated. Article 2, Chapter 5, Number 47 All and everyone knowingly reading, without authority of the Holy See, the books of apostates and heretics, defending heresy, or books of any authors, which are by name prohibited by apostolic letters, also those keeping, printing, and in any way defending such works, incur ipso facto excommunication, reserved in a special manner to the Roman pontiff. Number 48. Those who without the approbation of the ordinary print or cause to be printed books of Holy Scripture or notes of commentaries on the same, incur ipso facto excommunication, but not reserved. No man therefore may infringe or temerariously venture to contravene this document of our constitution, ordination, limitation, derogation and will. If anyone shall so presume, let him know that he will incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed Apostles Peter and Paul. Pope Leo the Thirteenth. Commentary. Notice how this license is only to be granted in urgent cases only by high ecclesiastical authority. Robert Diamond thinks himself exempt of these laws by Epikeia, even though he knows that his fake monastery was established in recognized and resist disobedience to the anti-popes of Vatican II while Robert and Frederick Diamond accepted John Paul II and the rest as true popes. Robert Diamond has the foolish and prideful opinion that he can grant this permission to read and keep prohibited books to any laywoman turning to him seeking Catholic advice. By no authority at all except Robert Diamond's non-existent imaginary authority derived from nothing but the pseudo epikeia of the schismatic and heretic that he is. Inter Precipuas on Biblical Societies, encyclical by Pope Gregory the Sixteenth, May 8, 1844. First, among the special schemes with which non-Catholics plot against the adherence of Catholic truth to turn their minds away from the faith, the biblical societies are prominent. They were first established in England and have spread far and wide so that we now see them as an army on the march conspiring to publish in great numbers copies of the books of divine scripture. These are translated into all kinds of vernacular languages for dissemination without discrimination among both Christians and infidels. Then the biblical societies invite everyone to read them unguided. Therefore it is just as Jerome complained in his day, they make the art of understanding the scriptures without a teacher, common to babbling old women and crazy old men and verbose sophists and to anyone who can read, no matter what his status. Indeed, what is even more absurd and almost unheard of, they do not exclude the common people of the infidels from sharing this kind of a knowledge. Second, in his sacred writings, Peter, after praising the letters of Paul, warns that in these epistles certain things are difficult to understand, which the unlearned and the unstable distort, just as they do the rest of the scriptures, which also leads to their destruction. He adds at once, since you know this beforehand, be on your guard. 
lest carried away by the error of the foolish, you fall away from your own steadfastness. Hence, it is clear to you that even from the first ages of Christianity, this was a skill appropriate for heretics. Having repudiated the given word of God and rejected the authority of the Catholic Church, they either interpolate by artifice into the scriptures or pervert its meaning through interpretation. Nor finally are you ignorant of the diligence and knowledge required to faithfully translate into another language the words of the Lord. In the many translations from the biblical societies, serious errors are easily inserted by the great number of translators, either through ignorance or deception. These errors, because of the very number and variety of translations, are long hidden and hence lead the faithful astray. It is of little concern to these societies if men reading their vernacular Bibles fall into error. My comment, it could also be said that it is of little concern to Robert Diamond if random lay people fall into error through his recommendation of reading these Protestant, quote, Bibles. There was a special prohibition of scripture translations promulgated either in Gaul a little later or in Spain before the 16th century. But later even more care was required when the Lutherans and Calvinists dared to oppose the changeless doctrine of the faith with an almost incredible variety of errors. They left no means untried to deceive the faithful with perverse explanations of the sacred books which were published by their adherents with new interpretations in the vernacular. Therefore, in the rules written by the fathers chosen by the Council of Trent, approved by Pius IV, and placed in the index of forbidden books, we read the statute declaring that vernacular Bibles are forbidden, except to those for whom it is judged that the reading will contribute, quote, to the increase of faith and piety, end quote. Because of the continued deceptions of heretics, this rule was further restricted and supplemented by a declaration of Benedict the Fourteenth. For the future, the only vernacular translations which may be read are those which are approved by the Apostolic See or at least were published with annotations taken from the Holy Fathers of the Church or from learned and Catholic authors. So before the quote biblical societies were founded, the faithful had already been alerted by the aforementioned decrees against the deception of the heretics, which works in their specious zeal to spread the divine writings for the common use. We again condemn all the above-mentioned biblical societies of which our predecessors disapproved. Besides, we confirm and renew by our apostolic authority the prescriptions listed and published long ago concerning the publication, dissemination, reading and possession of vernacular translations of sacred scriptures. Concerning other works of any writer, we repeat that all must abide by the general rules and decrees of our predecessors, which are found in the index of forbidden books, and indeed not only for those books specifically listed, but also for others, to which the aforementioned prohibitions apply. Also, 
take from the faithful both the vernacular Bibles which have been published contrary to the sanctions of the Roman pontiffs and all other books which are proscribed and condemned. In this way, see that the faithful themselves by your warnings and authority are taught that they ought to consider what kind of food is healthful for them and what is nauseous and deadly. From the encyclical Ubi Primum of Pope Leo XII, May 5, 1824. 14. By it we are taught, and by divine faith we hold, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that no other name under heaven is given to man except the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in which we must be saved. This is why we profess that there is no salvation outside the Church. 17. You have noticed a society commonly called the Bible Society boldly spreading throughout the whole world, rejecting the traditions of the Holy Fathers and infringing the well-known decree of the Council of Trent it works by every means to have the Holy Bible translated, or rather mistranslated, into the ordinary languages of every nation. There are good reasons for fear that, as has already happened in some of their commentaries and in other respects by a distorted interpretation of Christ's gospel, they will produce a gospel of man, or what is worse, a Gospel of the Devil. 18. To prevent this evil, our predecessors published many constitutions. Most recently, Pius VII wrote two briefs, one to Ignatius, Archbishop of Gniezno, the other to Stanislaus, Archbishop of Moliu, quoting carefully and wisely many passages from the sacred writings and from the tradition to show how harmful to faith and morals this wretched undertaking is. 19. In virtue of our apostolic office we too exhort you to try every means of keeping your flock from those deadly pastures. Do everything possible to see that the faithful observe strictly the rules of our congregation of the Index. Convince them that to allow holy Bibles in the ordinary language, wholesale and without distinction, would on account of human rashness cause more harm than good. Experience also shows that this is true and aside from other fathers, St. Augustine states it in the following words heresies and other wicked teachings which ensnare souls and cast them into the deep arise only when the good scriptures are bad badly understood and when what is not well understood in, it, in them is affirmed with daring rashness. 21. For it delights in printing its own translations as well as in dashing through every city to distribute them itself to the common people. From Cardinal Mary de Val, forward, in the Index of Prohibited Books, revised and published by orders of His Holiness Pope Pius XI. Page 11. Those who would put the scriptures indiscriminately into the hands of the people are the believers always in private interpretation, a fallacy both absurd in itself and pregnant with disastrous consequences. These counterfeit champions of the inspired book hold the Bible to be the sole source of divine revelation and cover with abuse and trite sarcasm the Catholic and Roman Church. The Council of Toulouse, which met in November of 1229, 
about the time of the crusade against the Albigensians, set up a special ecclesiastical tribunal or court known as the Inquisition to search out and try heretics. Twenty of the 45 articles decreed by the council dealt with heretics and heresy. It ruled in part, Canon 14, We prohibit also that the laity should be permitted to have the books of the Old or New Testament, unless anyone from motive of devotion should wish to have the Psalter, or the Breviary, or Divine Offices, or the Hours of the Blessed Virgin. But we most strictly forbid their having any translation of these books. Quote, from the 1913 Catholic Encyclopedia article on Scripture, after the death of Innocent III, the Synod of Toulouse directed in 1229 its 14th canon against the misuse of sacred Scripture on the part of the Cathari. Prohibemos ne libros feteris et novi testamenti laicis permitatur abere. As you have seen now, by all appearance, Robert Diamond is judged, by his own words, as a Protestant. Robert Diamond was honest when he judged the anti-popes by their external works, but in the same manner he is to be judged. He cannot claim some hidden excuse, especially for these premeditated written words. St. Robert Bellarmine, de Romano Pontifice, For men are not bound or able to read hearts, but when they see that someone is a heretic, by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic pure and simple, and condemn him as a heretic. Just as the Vatican anti-popes once in a while teach orthodoxy, this does not excuse their particular heresies or obstinate deviations from Catholic doctrine. The Diamond Brothers are very clear that whoever descends in the least with them goes into schism. In this zeal, though they are hypocrites and schismatics, they correctly express a Catholic dogma. Whoever descends in the least from the Catholic Church is a systematic. So in conclusion, if you continue to keep communion, communion with or to appear to be united to these systematic diamond brothers, after having been presented with this evidence of their crypto-protestantism, you are a systematic, not a Catholic, and anathema is upon you. Pope St. Leo XIII, Satis Cognitum, Part 9. But he who descends even in one point from divinely revealed truth absolutely rejects all faith, since he thereby refuses to honor God as the supreme truth and the formal motive of faith. In many things they are with me, in a few things not with me. But in those few things in which they are not with me, the many things in which they are will not profit them. And this indeed most deservedly, for they who take from Christian doctrine what they please lean on their own judgments, not on faith, and not bringing into ca captivity every understanding unto the obedience of Christ, they more truly obey themselves than God. You who believe what you like, believe yourselves rather than the gospel. On a final note, I would like to point out that it is especially abominable that VaticanCatholic.com would advise a mother, as well as all who read that advice on their website, to allow her children 
to keep and read books that are proven to contain heresies, such as the KJV. VaticanCatholic.com just vaguely say that, quote, people who might fall prey to Protestant lies should not be reading or watching their heretical perversions of the Bible. They never say what they mean by that, and they definitely do not mean the KJV by it, but probably some Protestant preaching. They think the KJV is actually a good Bible, as shown above. They say every person should judge by himself or herself if she should read Protestant material or not, but these are not the standards of the Catholic Church.